<coughs> check, check. Check already. Okay, let's start. Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to my BMW 318i. So it's been exactly one year and this car has done about 24,000 kilometers and it has been an amazing car to drive pretty much every single day. I wanted to share with you guys how, the, all the good and the bad points about owning this BMW. So today's video is all about the 10 good and the bad points about the BMW 318i. Now before we move forward, please consider subscribing to my channel and also press the bell icon and also please keep all the notifications on so that you never miss any video updates in future. Starting off with the first one is this paint chipping. Now the, the paint work on this car is pretty soft in, uh, and I've observed this on many occasions because you see these uh, sort of small dents or the chipping on the paint that has come off. These are just literally when I've just opened the door and it has been parked next to a wall or something and it's been a very slight touch and not even that. Even on the bonnet there has been a big chipping and I don't know how that happened but it just was there uh, after maybe a car wash or I don't know maybe someone lifted the wipers and then it just scraped the bonnet but but it, it it's quite a big chunk of chipping which has happened on the bonnet as well and also on the other doors there are various small small dots that have happened now the next point is the side mirrors and the side mirrors they don't have the blind spot warning system and uh, considering that this car is pretty expensive and to not get a side uh, blind spot warning system that is something which this car really needs and also not even that the, the side mirrors have started squeaking <laughs> so whenever you close or open them the, the the side mirrors they tend to squeak especially in summer when when everything dries up and then these make some horrible noises but currently they are not which is pretty good but there is some slight amount of noise that still keeps coming but again you don't expect that sort of things from a car like a BMW. The doors, they are a bit too soft when you close them or also when you open them as I shall uh, explain you. So when you open the door, it's pretty easy to open mind you but then when you try to close them, they are way too soft and just they just close all of a sudden. And because of that, if you try to apply a little more pressure, you see there's a loud thudding and then it's not just that uh, whoever sat in this car has has been complaining to me about the soft doors as well the fourth point is the interiors now let's be honest the interiors are a bit too plain to my liking because yes i get the point that there is a bit of styling around but then otherwise it's it's a pretty plain sort of interiors even the door cards there's nothing going on but it's it's a pretty straightforward kind of interiors but i wish there was something more colorful about it the fifth point is the the car lacks uh, an adaptive cruise control again for the price that you pay you expect at least an adaptive cruise control from the car but this just doesn't come with uh, the adaptive cruise control but just the normal cruise control also in terms of storage the the door bins like the the amount of space that you would expect from other sedans of from this range as well and because of that you can't even put a very big bottle and even putting the bottle is a bit of a hassle and uh, 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 there is also this this uh, plastic that that keeps chipping away every time you try to put a bottle and remove it if it's a plastic bottle it's a, it's okay but if you try to put a metal bottle and try to remove it there is always a chipping which happens and you don't want your car to be scratching from inside as well the next point is this uh, side hand rest on the doors now if you are a tall person and if you take the seats behind and try to put the hand here because it is curving inside and eventually just disappears at the edge of uh, of the of the door so when you try to place your hands while driving it's going to tend to slip so that is one thing that they should have uh, sort of made a bigger hand rest or or maybe an even hand rest that goes all the way till the back now the very important point that this car lacks are the charging plugs now in today's generation i mean you pretty much want a lot of charging plugs and uh, other manufacturers are pretty much giving you up to four to 
nine uh, charging plugs in the in the car but in this uh, 318i you get one just a cigarette lighter which is your 120 watt uh, normal power uh, socket and also there is one just your a uh, usb plug in in the handrest but there is no usb plugs in the back at all so eventually there is just one usb plug and just uh, one 120 watt power socket out here which is i think not enough for the five passengers in the car in the back you got this big transmission tunnel out here as a result of that three people can't sit quite comfortably even though the rear seats are pretty flat the middle middle row of seat is pretty flat but let me demonstrate you you see this is how you you are going to be sitting if you are the third person or the middle person sitting in the back and i think for a longer journey it, it is a little bit uncomfortable also this car sometimes lacks the response timing because this is a second bag that I press the, the throttle. So when you press the throttle and you need uh, an immediate power, then this car takes a little while to respond to that. And this is basically my car is in the, the comfort uh, setting. But if I put it in sport, things don't change a lot. It still takes about half a second before it replies to my command. But if you put it in Eco Pro, just don't do that i would suggest because it would take ages for the car to respond to your command now an additional problem that i've started facing with this car since probably two three months now but then it has been going on and off it but now off lately it, this this warning has just stayed on my dashboard for a long time and it's the sos call system failure now i did some research and found out that this is a very common problem that that happens on the bmw but what is more annoying is that when this problem uh, uh, pops up on your on your car then pretty much it just does not leave the 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 center dashboard the so it just see takes over all the uh, information system that you can see in the in the dashboard and as a result of that while you are driving all you see is just the the failure system and for, for a while this this problem was coming and going so i thought maybe this is just a software issue or something but then since 15 days this problem has just stayed on my screen and i think i i, I am going to be going to the the, uh, the service center to get this verified so those were the uh, the bad points about my 318i but now let's dive into what are the good points about this car and starting off with the dashboard itself the the infotainment system is pretty straightforward which i love about it and it's pretty straightforward although the screen is a bit, sm a bit small but then it's just perfect while driving uh, at night or during the day because it's just right there in your face but not too much where nowadays where the manufacturers have started putting the screen big screen right in front of you and it just hangs out of the dashboard but this is very well placed and just smooths out also your ac controls and every single thing is just laid out quite well the next point is the camera system although this car has only one camera system but the camera quality is pretty nice and it's also to do with the fact that even the screen that they've given for the infotainment system is pretty nice and as a result of that after the camera has also been given uh, of a good quality the whole system comes out with a result which is so nice and so crisp and so clear like when you're reversing there is no chance that you would miss out any object and even at night it works pretty well the next point is the comfort in this car and it is just amazing like the the seats are leather seats and during the long journey it's it is just pretty uh, comfortable the next point is the the seat adjustment now the seat adjustment on this 318i is mechanical so even for the passenger and the driver but i think i have never mentioned this point but i really like the fact that the seats are mechanically adjusted now let me let, let's just think for a moment that you know if you have too much of mechanic uh, uh, i'm sorry electronic bits going into your seat there are more chances of it failing in future or you know the motor is just stopping or something but when you have mechanical it's it's also to do with the fact that it's pretty fast like you can you can just 
pretty much change this so quickly and you know without wasting your time where, where whereas in the in an electronic seats you would just have to wait for the seats to go back you know adjust here it, it just takes a lot of time and i think i prefer the mechanical ones the next point is the range of this car now this car comes with a 1.5 liter twin turbocharged petrol engine and as a result of that it delivers a fuel efficiency of 13 to 14 and this is pretty much in everyday driving where i'm cruising along on highways inside the city and I'm doing speeds of anywhere between 80 to 120 and as a result of that I get a range of 650 kilometers on a fuel uh, on a full tank and to be honest that is pretty impressive also the next point is that this car is pretty easier to maintain and drive because let's be honest up till now over my one year ownership I haven't had any major issues apart from the the sms which is which is actually not a very big problem if you see is just a software or a or a hardware bit but then that doesn't really affect the the functioning of the car even bmw has a major service after every one year so i think in terms of the whole performance and the maintenance this car is pretty much up there the nvh levels in this car are so good because whenever you are going about 120 or you are cruising at that speed there is no wind whooshing the build quality is solid and as a result of that the nvh levels are kept in check and if you talk about the bmw and if you do not talk about the handling then it is not even a bmw video so coming to the handling bit this car just handles like a gem so it's just so precise it's just so pointy it's just amazing like point this car in any direction it just responds immediately and in spite of it having an electronic steering and yet it feels like a hydraulic one where the response is pretty on point also this car has a very short turning radius like very short it's it's almost as close to a hatchback this car comes with the air suspension system and as a result of that a, you don't have the body roll first thing because this car has very very minimum body roll it feels pretty stiff yet comfortable from inside but also what the air suspension does is it enhances the handling uh, capabilities of this car as well so those were the good and the bad points about my bmw 318i after owning it for a year and driving it for 24,000 kilometers now if you ask me i would yes suggest you to go for this car because let's be honest this car is practical this car has performance this car is pretty sensible in every way because it's a small car you can drive it every day it's a fuel efficient car as well so you can go on a longer the distance without burning holes in your pocket by putting a lot of petrol in it but you also get the performance of a bmw and the quality and the fit and finish of a bmw and as a result of that this is a strongly recommended car if you want to subscribe to my channel click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here and make sure to give this video a like as well anyways until we meet next time bye bye